So, in this tutorial we've already built a pretty simple process in which we have three user tasks and they just go one after another. We're going to add something kind of fun here now. We're going to actually add uh, a little more diversity to the options and as well a little bit of automation. We're going to do that by actually using this user task and some data that's produced there to add a XOR gateway that subsequently runs some kind of um, worker. So let's uh, go into that. I'm going to go into the modeler. Now, if you followed the previous tutorials, um, you would have known that we created a little form here, uh, sorry, which is linked, there we see, there we see it, and it's uh, going to give us some variables that we can then use for um, the, in the process in order to root it. The forms we created are um, here in a little folder that we're starting to work with. We're going to be working here in here as well to create the workers. So let me just bring my forms into the modeler. Great. So if we see for ask for departure, we, we have this question here, who can help? This produces a variable called help that either has the value of Austria or this lovely um, aristocrat, Jean Xavier. So we are going, depending on which one of these has been selected, we're going to choose a different route in our process. So we can do that by making a bit of space here, putting in a gateway, who to ask for help. And we have old JX is here, and up here is Austria. Now, obviously we're asking Austria for help. It's a big place. So we'll just send a letter or something. This is something that is quite easily up. Uh, um, automated and we expect that someone else will go do this so I will just click automation now irrelevant of who we actually decide to ask for help we do expect to come back here and go spend some time so now we need to uh, send a, a request for help okay so our model has changed but the um, attributes to make it executable have not yet changed, specifically the gateway and the service task. So let's take a look once more at our form, uh, departure form, which you see, which we see here has help as a variable. So if I copy that, I can go in here and I can say, okay, if we have chosen help, if that variable is equal to Austria, we'll go this way. And the other option would be, because we have some nice field validation here, is this guy. And so we can say, if the other option is taken, and we've chosen to ask JX for help, we'll say help equals this variable. And then we'll go this direction, okay. So that's pretty straightforward. And now we're actually going to do the important part of executing this. And this involves building a worker and then being able to link an external worker that's running somewhere else with this process to what we'll do next. Now, the first step of making this service be callable is actually nothing to do with the service just yet. We can actually finish executing this model without needing to build the service first, which is quite nice. When you select the service task, you'll see a bunch of implementation types. Uh, if you're interested in how we would do this with Java, there's another tutorial where we show how to use the engine with Spring Boot. We're not gonna do that here. We're gonna use the external task uh, methodology. Uh, this is a, a pattern by which the engine is a centralized orchestrator and the services are externalized and are running somewhere else and basically are uh, subscribing to a topic. So in this case, an external service is gonna tell the engine that they do a specific topic and that topic is gonna to be called send letter. Okay, which means when the process gets to this point, it will wait until a service um, tells the engine, give me this work to do. It'll then lock the work and it'll then do it. So with that, I can actually deploy this now and leave that while I go build the service. We deploy it in exactly the same way we did the first time, which is using the REST API. So I click up here, I click deploy, 
There we go. And now, interestingly, what I should see is if I refresh this, this says version one. Uh, what I should see when I refresh is that a version number two shows up. Now, this is untouched. This one is still here. Version two is right there. Okay, marvelous. And you can see that now, if we wanted to start an instance, again, we would go to task list, just like we did before. We would go start process, and it'll always start the newest version. So we don't need to worry about the old version. So prepare for departure is the uh, task that we have. Uh, the book to pack. Uh, let's go with assassination vacation by Sarah Vowell. Great book. Everyone should read it. Uh, who can help? Let's go with Austria this time. Let's click complete. Okay. So what did that do? In cockpit, if we go back here, we will see if we refresh that now the process should have been rooted up to send requests for help. And right now, we don't have a service built for this. It's going to wait here until that service exists. So next, we are actually going to build that service, which is going to register against the engine, do that work, complete the task, and then continue forward. In this tutorial, we're actually going to use JavaScript. You can use any language you like. The reason I've chosen JavaScript is just because I did the other tutorial in Java, so I thought I'd mix it up. We have a lot of supported languages that we could use. If you want to use Python for this, or you want to use Go or anything at all, you can go find the external task client in those. I've left below a link of the various external task clients that have been created by the community. Um, so we're going to actually start in the folder where we have all of our cool stuff. So we have our forms, our model, the engine. I'm going to create a brand new folder called workers. Okay, now in here, I'm going to create a new file. It's going to be called send letter worker, and it's going to be JavaScript. Yep, great. Now, because I'll be editing JavaScript, this is the point where I'm going to open up my uh, Visual Studio code at this folder so I can start editing it. So right now, we just have an empty file with nothing in it. Um, another reason why I'm going to use uh, the JavaScript uh, as a language for this is because if you go to the ja uh, Commanda external task client JS, we have actually a really, really great um, uh, readme that has loads of code snippets that I can steal. So you can ex basically ex see here how to install it, some code snippets and other functionality that you might want to do in a more advanced way. I'm going to start by just copying this. I'm going to go back to my file and I'm going to just paste it in here. And then I'm going to talk through what's going on here. The first thing is that we say that it requires this dependency. Uh, then down here in the config, there's a lot of configuration that you can add. The, the config that's added here, which is required, is the uh, base URL for the um, where the engine is. Because as I mentioned already, it'll be registering against the engine in order to get work and complete work. So pointing it where the rest endpoint is, is really important. We also have this section here where it subscribes to stuff. In this case, it's subscribed to uh, some random thing called a credit score checker. We're not going to do that because we need to subscribe for a specific bit of work. What work? If we open back up our model, we set this particular task to of the topic send letter. And that's exactly what this worker needs to ask for. So if I replace subscribe this with subscribe send letter, then we're all good. Now it'll subscribe to that. Now, right now, all it does is it would, it would subscribe to it. So it would lock that task, it would take it, and then it would just immediately complete the task. We don't want that. We want something a little more complicated. Specifically, we actually want to have it get some variables from the instance and then decide on something, do some sort of logic and then send back a response. Uh, luckily, I am going to copy some code that you can find below that does that. So I'm going to replace the body of this with uh, this. So the first thing it says is we are getting a variable book title. We are getting the variable um, uh, called book from the uh, from the engine. Now, we know this, this variable exists because if we go to cockpit and we click on this instance and we click on variables, we will see that book is a variable and here is the name of it. Okay, that makes sense. 
So we now will get that variable. We'll then print a reminder to read it. We will then say, OK, create a constant called process variables. For that, we actually need to add a, another dependency up here called variables. Um, and that means that we should then be able to put a variable into an object. And then when we complete the task at the end, we'll send back those variables. So let's save that. OK. So our worker is basically ready now. So now I need to actually install it, I guess, like to download the dependencies and then start it up. And we can do that quite easily from the terminal window. So a new terminal. And I'm going to go back to the GitHub repo and the, and the, um, the readme where it says here exactly how to install things. So if I copy this and go here and just paste this in here, what it'll do is it will actually download the dependencies I need. And we should be pretty happy with this when we see a folder uh, along here that says node modules and um, a package lock JSON. Okay, there we go, we're good. So now we need to start it up. Now I'm going to start it by saying node and then dot send letter worker.js. What should happen is it should subscribe to the engine, it should get back the task and print off the reminder to read the book. Next, it should actually move the token from here to there where we'll be able to see the response from the uh, file. So let's see if that works. So let's go back to our code. Let's press enter. OK, subscribed. Oh, there we go. It's subscribed to send letter. You can see here that we got a reminder to read this. And it also says that it completed the task correctly. So let's check if that is true. If that is true, I should refresh this. And there we have a serve time overseas. And if we go to um, there we go. We have our variable right here, our, our task that was created. Um, this has no UI, but a really cool thing is that if you click claim here, we can just load all the variables in the instance. So we have here help Austria, we have our book, and then we have a response from Austria that says, sorry, laugh, can't help. By the way, Prussia wants a quick word with you. Ooh, doesn't sound good. So we now have our worker set up, which means now anytime we start the process, um, it'll be picked up and completed quite easily. Okay, so that's pretty good. But we also want to do something a little more dynamic um, uh, next, I think, and it's to do with um, timers. So let's add a new type of um, BPMN event in the next tutorial.